Thanks for joining us to learn a little bit about remote board governance and some of the best practices going on right now as we're, a lot of us are working in a virtual environment. Uh, the material today appearing in the presentation is for informational purposes only. Shouldn't be construed as advice of any kind without limitation, legal, accounting, or investment advice. Information is not intended to create uh, and receipt does not constitute legal relationship, including but not limited to account client relationship. Although this information may have been prepared by professionals, it should be used as a substitute for professional services. If legal accounting, investment, other professional advice is required, the services of a professional should be sought. All right, so let's get into the content here. Um, Justin Fisher on the right. I've got my good friend here, Dan Gaffney, with me. We're both partners uh, at Moss Adams and spend a lot of time talking with clients in the governance and board space and just thought we would share with you a couple of best practices, things that we've been hearing that our clients or companies that we work with uh, have been doing that we thought have been really helpful to help make good decisions in this kind of environment. So Dan, why don't we go ahead and get started, um, talk through these six best practices that we've been hearing about and some themes that we have. Maybe you could get us kicked off with just kind of frequency and, and what you're seeing with uh, board meetings in that space. Yeah, absolutely, Justin. Um, you know, as, as you said, governance is as important as it's ever been uh, in this time as we're all trying to navigate these, these uh, time and, and challenging times right now. And uh, you know, these ideas are just uh, a few of the, the things that have come up, come up with, with our clients as we've been working with it. And frequency is one of them. And, and you know, things are changing so fast. Um, uh, constant uh, movement in, in your business with your people, customers, regulations, government, assistance programs, the economy, everything's moving really, really fast. And so the importance of, of having your board and your governance uh, structure a meeting on a, on a regular basis is important. And those meetings uh, can be short, um, uh, but the important thing is to, to get them going as frequently as possible as it, it provides opportunity for, for your leadership teams to address the challenges as they, as they present themselves on a pretty, pretty frequent and regular basis. What about involvement, Justin? Would, who, who should be involved in some of these meetings? Yeah, one thing that we've seen, I guess I would say, is, is just boards being flexible on who's attending, who should attend. Uh, example of that would be maybe, uh, you know, those that are on the corona response team or crisis team kind of coming in, whether it's from a people standpoint or for some financial information. But just at the end of the day, the board trying to widen their aperture as much as they can to get additional insight from leaders in their business that may not necessarily be on the board, but may have super critical insights uh, based on how we, we want to navigate or run the business right now. So I think it's, it's, not, a bad, it's not a bad idea to be flexible on uh, widening up who can attend uh, some of those board meetings and having them come in for, uh, you know, kind of narrow rifle shot type uh, information. You know, on the material side, I know, <laughs> you know, you have uh, board materials and kind of classic, but any adjustments you've seen there, Dan? Oh, absolutely. And I, I couldn't agree more with the comments on flexibility on involvement. I mean, there's there's so many uh, uh, challenging issues uh, to be addressed, and the, the more ideas you can bring to the table, the better. And and, uh, and on the materials front, and you know, what you, what you, what you might want to be thinking about is not getting bogged down in the traditional board packets and board materials. Uh, for every single meeting, instead focusing on what are the substantive issues and challenges you're faced with, and and make sure that you're you're getting those on the table and having your board or additional attendees to your board uh, be prepared to discuss those challenging issues, uh, and so focusing much more on the conversation and dialogue than on the presentation and production of materials seems to be a trend that we're hearing a lot with, with clients right now. Uh, but then that probably ties really closely to then uh, documenting those uh, meetings. And so what does that, what does that look like, Justin? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I mean, I think that like what you were talking about, you know, to prepare for, for a board meeting now is, is kind of paring that down. I think the post meetings uh, we've seen get pared down quite a bit as far as notes and minutes, information around that. I've even heard some folks call these decision minutes, right, where you're having these kind of crisp bullet point notes about here's the decisions that we made as we're moving quickly 
um, just as reminders so we can kind of move forward. And just I I anything that you're doing to clean up and speed up, um, you know, that kind of process has been, um, uh, we've heard that it's, that's been helpful. So, so uh, you know, pr probably a really huge area is just where do you focus? Where where are owner, owners and management focusing and, and how do they stay kind of short, intermediate, and long-term? Well, I have, absolutely. Focus is, is definitely uh, one of the top areas of, of, of thought for, for boards and, and governance to be thinking about because, you know, there's, there's, again, as we said, there's so much occurring and happening right now. And, and we're also kind of living in this myopic world where we're able to focus on the, on the, the COVID-19 situation, and um, but there's also so much else happening within the organization, and people and challenges and, and strategies and such that that the the challenge is to 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 work on what sh should be as an organization being focused on, um, you know, really thinking about not only your short term, what's happening right now today and the next few months, and, and midterm, and, you know, how, as we come out of this. What does that even look like? And then long term, what is our organization going to be doing going forward? All of those are important dialogue and discussion to be having. Uh, you know, as 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 things have changed so much in the last few months and so rapidly, uh, for the most part, everyone's strategic 2020 strategic plans and forecasts are out the window. And it's time to kind of revisit those those things and, and what does it mean now in today's a world in today's economy and today's you know, government regulations and tax structures and such. So that's that's where we're seeing uh, organizations and boards focus, really get, get focused on their discussions and dialogues and their meetings about short, mid, and long-term strategies and goals as it relates to what's happening today. And then I suppose that then ties into the next piece here, which is decision making. Yeah, you, you're exactly right. And I think you know, having that long-term focus does tie into decision-making and really decision-making, you know, as we have on the slide here around company values, you know, make, make sure that you're continuing moving back. The board can really help owners and management as they're making quick, tough decisions, have them take a look at what's right for the company. What is, what is our value say? What is consistent with our long-term values? I think another aspect of that um, that we've heard about from boards paying particular attention to right now, especially as we're all moving so fast, is just being careful how they're mixing operations and governance. You know, the operators that are reworking financial numbers as we're all kind of moving and shifting, you know, making sure that they're not really overstepping, strat uh, is overstepping into strategy or governance. You know, be clear about who's giving the analysis and, you know, giving input and making recommendations and ultimately who's making decisions. So all of those things are important, especially as we're all moving so fast right now. So, well, in summary, that's just a, 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 quick, a quick discussion of what we're seeing. I think the six best practices that Dan and I uh, thought would be valuable for you. And I think as we take a look at the, the overall themes there, I, I would say not, not only those best practices, but think about how to move fast, move decisively, you know, stay strategic, stay long-term, just like Dan was talking about. And also make sure that you stick to your values. As, you, as long as you're making values-based decisions, we're going to be all right here. So uh, thanks a lot for your time. And if you have any questions or ideas, feel free to contact us. We're always uh, open to those kinds of dialogues and interesting to hear uh, what others are working on. I'm sure that these aren't the be only best practices out there. So, And obviously, any questions or want to connect, uh, just give us a shout. Thank you.